first of all, good morning. morning. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. <laughs> I've heard that so many years of Happy Sabbath. And I can remember that. I said, Why do they say that every Sabbath? I got tired of it. But then after a while, you, you miss it when you don't hear it, you know that happy Sabbath. Well, welcome to the Seventh-day Baptist Church, all of you. And this is number three for me. You know I'm not a minister, so I'm doing the best I can, and I want God to speak through me to you guys and whoever is listening. So uh, let's, uh, let's stand for our first hymn. Are you washed in the blood? Good morning, everyone. I'm going to read scriptures today from Ephesians and from 1 Peter. Ephesians 1, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. And I'm just just going to read from one right into the other, since they go so well together. In him, you know who that is, right? Anybody not know? Okay. In him, we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your elders, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Let's pray together. Well, Father, today we thank you for your servants, Paul and Peter, that we can read these scriptures from different writers, from different books of the Bible, and they go together so perfectly. And of course, especially we thank you for the Lord Jesus that they were writing about. Thank you for what he did for us. Thank you for your mercy. And Father, we just pray that, that our time together today can be an encouragement to us all. So fill us with your spirit and if we haven't started already, uh, help us even now to be worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Bless our servant, uh, your servant, Jay, as he speaks to us today. Thank you, Father, again, for, for bringing us together on this Sabbath. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we want your words to hear, not mine. I am not a minister, so I want your word forward out of my mouth. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to be here with us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm starting off my little speech here with In the Garden of Eden, our first parents, Adam and Eve. I think we all know the story. Adam and Eve fell into sin. Eve believed the lies of the serpent. Have you ever thought about the, uh, how God spoke to the serpent on your belly the rest of your days. I've always wondered, how did the serpent get up in the tree? Did he have wings? Did he have feet and legs to crawl up there? Something to think about, but God was angry that he did that. And, uh, Eve listened to that serpent. Instead of trusting God's words, 
So she ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, and she shared it with Adam. Eve must have been very, very beautiful, a perfect woman. And I can kind of think that, you know, Adam looking at Eve and knows that she's going to die. Well, I'll go with her. She's so beautiful. I just love her. Maybe it was the wrong kind of love. I don't know. But he took a bite too. It, uh, some of the scriptures, you know, we are not given the background on it. But you wonder, with her being beautiful, perfect, and him looking at her, and didn't want her to go, I'll just go with her and took a bite deliberately. Hmm. Now they know to themselves they had sinned. They knew they were naked and they covered themselves with fig leaves. Isn't it funny how Adam loves Eve, now he's sinned, and the first thing he does in our modern term is throws her under the bus. Lord, that woman you gave me, she caused me. And look at what Eve does. Passes the buck. We tend to do that. We don't want to be found guilty. So, we, well, it's over there. You know, that person caused it. Uh, the devil made me do it, you know. And here he tells God, that woman, that snake, they beguiled me. But God did not accept the coverings. So what does he do? Well, he is perfect talking about our father and cannot tolerate sin. The sin had to be atoned for. And since the atonement for that sin could not be made by a human hand, God shed the innocent blood of a little lamb or maybe a goat. We don't know, but he, he skinned that animal and that blood ran onto the ground, that innocent little lamb. And he covered Adam and Eve. And that was to serve as an atonement for their sins. And you think about, um, we know from Israel, that when a perfect lamb was born, they would take that lamb and they'd wrap it up with a cloth to protect it because they didn't want any blemishes. They wanted it protected because it was going to be a sacrifice lamb. And Jesus was the same way. He was wrapped up with a cloth and put in a cradle to protect him. He, from the very beginning, was our lamb, our innocent lamb. This was the beginning of our redemption. Both the Old and the New Testaments in the Bible carry the theme of blood being offered as an atonement for our sins. Hebrew 9.22 in fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no for forgiveness. I can remember as a kid always thinking, why did God need blood? You know, when you just think about the blood part of it, but you don't think about, well, you take the blood away, 
there is no life. There's nothing there. That's death. But he wanted blood. Jesus became the perfect atonement for our sins, being the perfect sacrifice, free of blemish. He took our sins unto himself so that he might satisfy the law, and his death was accepted by his heavenly Father as full payment for our sins. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Our God is so wonderful that he would send his child. If you have children or grandchildren, would you kill them for someone else's problems? That's a hard thing to do. Him sending his own son to die and kill him for these strange people, these sinners that don't care about him. Thank goodness some of us still care about our Heavenly Father. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could kill my child. That, uh, that's really hard to think about, but he did it for us because of what we did. The atonement of Jesus is the gift that is offered to everyone. Redemption is granted to those who earnestly seek forgiveness and want a relationship with God. Without that relationship, I keep thinking about, I mentioned it last time, about the ten virgins. It wasn't the oil. You sure can't go down to Walmart and buy Holy Spirit. It's that relationship that we have, each of us. Thank goodness we have a relationship and lean on our Father. I do, every day. God wanted to redeem us so that we could be in his presence without the need of a sacrifice or rituals. Have you thought about uh, heaven, what it's going to be like, who we're going to see? I always think of my grandmother. I worry about my mother, but that's between her and God. But my grandmother was so much to me. She would read me Bible stories and take me to church and, you know, teach me because my mom wasn't there. She was always working. And so grandma was there. It was wonderful. I just, I just love my grandma. I have a feeling because I remember before she passed away, she says, I only want to live to see Jesus come. She didn't get to see that. I may not. If I'm in the ground, I'm still going to see him. That'll be wonderful, won't it? Hebrews 10, 19. And so, dear brethren, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. I'm glad he did that for me. I hope he... He does it for all of us. All we got to do is accept him and put him in our lives. Every day and moment, we should be praying, thanking him for what he did. The atonement of Jesus means forgiveness for us. 
His blood restored our favor before God. It promises a final deliverance from the power of sin. Revelation 7, 13 and 14. When one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where do they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's going to be great, isn't it? We'll all be sitting at that table. Jesus is going to serve us, and it is going to be miles long. And we'll see everybody we know, and some we don't know. And imagine we're going to meet the disciples. It's going to be exciting. I keep thinking about that. Anyway, that's my sermon for today. Shall we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts and our actions. Help us to be overcomers. We just love you so much. And we thank you for your son who saved us. We're nothing but dirt, but you love us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.